Welcome to the More Than Just Mowing podcast. I'm your host, Joel Cleaver, and this is the official podcast of Jim's Mowing. If you didn't know it, it's the world's largest gardening franchise with more than 2,000 franchisees in Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. And on the podcast show, we interview franchisees, our franchisors who run the regions and manage the franchisees, and also Jim himself. So there's a lot of broad range of content, and we do encourage you, if you are researching more about Jim's Mowing, about what we do, go through those episodes. It'll give you a great sense of who we are. So without further delay, Here's today's episode. So Nathan Dunn, thank you for joining us on the Jim's Mowing podcast and the Jim's Group one as well. And we're going to present you at the start with this Accor voucher, which is the silver membership. Basically gives you two free nights to any Accor hotel in the world and a bunch of discounts and dining and, and drinks. So that's the silver membership valid for 12 months. So we'll get that to you after the interview, mate. So thank you for joining us today in a 6.30 p.m. on a cold night, I'm sure in Warrnambool and up in yeah. up in uh, Melbourne as well. So Nathan, no first, first of all, do just want to introduce yourself with a bit about Tell us a bit about yourself and what you're doing uh, prior to joining Jim's Mowing. I uh, did a mixture of stuff before I decided to do Jim's Mowing. Very far back when I first got well, my first uh, job out of school was baking. Did that for a few years and then started with dairy farming. Pretty much moved up this way with my ex-wife and couldn't get a baking job. So dairy farming's big around here. So we I got into that. Uh, did that for several years and then... I actually ended up working for a Jim's mowing guy like in the local area. And that sort of gave me a taste for it. And I was like, I reckon I want to do this one day. And then I pretty much had to go back with farming because he, you know, Dak uh, got rid of a few people. He had too many workers. So I did farming for another couple of years and then a franchise uh, popped up. And I just thought, I'm just going to take the risk. I know it was a bit risky and just went for the leap. And yeah, been great ever since. Yeah, so dairy farmers, it's a very tough job. I think I think farming is the lowest paid per hour for what people do because people who do farming generally work very long hours, as you would know, and, and they love it, especially dairy farms. You're up in the morning and a lot of cow poo and stuff, and you're never, you're never going to get away from that smell in the morning and stuff. So you're, you're leaving dark time and then you're getting home at dark time. And, and that was the other thing too, like hardly any time with the family. Like you just felt like you were always working. A tough gig. Uh, it's a twenty four seven gig farming, and then you got carving season and stuff like that, and it's even worse. So, when you say a risk, how is it a risk to you? Because the reason why I ask that is, if you've got a young family and stuff, and you're working night up to uh, you know from the morning to the to the night, I know it might sound risky doing your own business. So, how did you? What were the risks to you, or what what made it seem risky to you? Um, probably partly because. My ex-wife didn't have a job at the time. We were kind of on the brink of possibly breaking up. It wasn't looking too great. And I didn't have any savings. So I knew I was going into it in debt. And I didn't have a ute. I had a Commodore sedan. And um, so I knew I'd had to look into possibly financing everything, uh, which was you know a bit scary. But I was able to do it. And I don't think I would have been able to do it like as an independent, I think because it was a franchise with gyms, I had all those options to finance everything. So yeah, that was the scary part, knowing that I'd have been so much debt. But yeah, so if, but four years in, I'm doing a lot better. It was definitely hairy and very scary for, I'll honestly say two to three years. I almost I almost quit in the second year. But yeah, now I think I'm nearly five years in now. So yeah. How how would how would you describe where you are now with your business? How how are you finding everything? I'm still in still have my areas of struggles. I won't deny that, but I think that's partly due to not being able to give it as much as I would like to. Just with like co-parenting with my ex-wife with our yep. boys, that's not really as smooth as I'd like it to be. So that makes things tricky. Things are unpredictable. So, and then, yeah, school pickups at 3.30, um, a lot of us, well, we'd be liking to work till five, six, seven o'clock if we can, but if I'm going to get the kids, well, that makes it tricky. So just life has made it a bit trickier, but I think as time goes on and, yeah, things get more organized and the kids are older, it'll just be easier and easier as the years go by. Now, how was the training experience? Can you remember back to your training times that you, uh, you would have come to Melbourne, I presume, for the training? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was good. It was it was fun. It had some yeah, boring bits. I won't deny that. <laughs> but um, I learned a lot. Yeah, I just listened. You know, like there's oh, there's some things where you think, no, oh, I don't know if I agree with that. You know, but then you then there's so much where I'm like, if I didn't come here, I wouldn't have learned this. I wouldn't have known. 
So yeah, you know, what did you take away from the training then, Nathan, that you applied um, back back when you started working? What were you what what were the things that you stuck in your mind or you remind you remembered from training? Maybe the strategic side of things like planning and yeah, all the little things. Because I kind of learned a bit from the guy that I worked for, the Jim's Mullen guy. And I've working, I, I didn't get to mention it earlier, but I did a bit of customer service. So I had the idea of, you know, treat the customers right. You know, always customer service is high. And I suppose learning even more about that did help in a different industry, like in this kind of world. And because I, I worked at KFC, so it's a bit different to... And it seemed was flat out. You're all, you'd have to be flat, flat out all the time in KFC. Yeah. <laughs> It was it was hectic, um, and yeah, that didn't last very long. It was just nuts. <laughs> yeah, I, I know I, that's the most popular place in Bournemouth on a Saturday. If anyone is, I'm from there originally as well, and there's a line onto the highway. It's like the second the second most popular KFC in Australia, or something like that. I can't remember what it was. Yeah, it's some, I've seen some staff or something like that with this standard. They have second most popular high traffic KFC in Australia. Or something. I'm surprised we don't have a second one already. <laughs> So you've got that customer service background. So, so you, you've got a really good rating. I had a look before jumping on at your rating. You've got a great star rating and a lot of reviews. So what to you is good customer service from your perspective? I think not being too biased not and just understanding everyone's got different needs. Like they might not be able to go around, around the back and pick up that dog poop. They might have a busy lifestyle. I've got dogs and I, I hardly get a chance to pick up mine. I think it's just being flexible and yeah, like I said, understanding and just, yeah, communicating with them. Like, and when they get that respect from you, that you're understanding, they'll do their best to help you out. So mm -hmm. it's like, once, yeah, once you get that relationship, then you've got that, that good thing going. That's what I think. And when, when a lead, when you get the lead from there, do you want to walk us through your process when a new lead comes to you? What do you go through? I'll try and con like ring them straight away. Um, sometimes if I'm like, on a real, you know, time time sensitive job, and I've got to, you know, get through it, and I can't really do a phone call. I might I'll text them and just say, "I'm Nathan Jim's mowing. I'm busy at the moment. I'll call you back in like half an hour or something, or sometime today." And they'll usually go, "Yeah, no worries." And yeah, then I'll call them back, and then just say that uh, when's a good time for you to uh, pop over and have a look at what you have there. And then I usually do that, so I know what I'm dealing with instead of just sort of guessing and giving a quote over the phone, even though some really want it. And yeah, go over a look, let them know that I'll give them a text back with a quote, then it's in writing. So I like to do that. I don't have the the old pads that, you know, the paper ones. I, I've kind of gone, got rid of them a while ago. I just find that I'll say that I'll do a text just so that we both have it in writing. And yeah, and they're fine with that. And how many clients are in your current, uh, your current customer database? How many, how many clients are you currently doing? Because I got one really big one, which is a whole day every single week. Um, I actually do a contract for Green Options. You probably would have heard of them for and doing Deakin University. Oh, really? So, I, yeah. So I do a day a week for the university in in Warrnambool. Um, so that kind of like I, I count that as like six or seven, eight jobs. Yeah, it would have been. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. Big big so, work there. Yeah. Yeah. So when I look at it like that, I've pretty much got about seventy clients. Great. Regular clients, yeah. And it can fluctuate. It did pop down to 60 at one point and up to 80. Yeah, so. Yeah. So, what, so what's your plan with your business, Nathan? Do you want to keep going at that level or what's your sort of, you like being the sole trader or what do you want to do with your business? I have had a couple of employees and it is challenging. I'm actually, yeah, I've got one at the moment and he's two days a week, but it's just tricky. I'm, I know no one's ever going to be the, as good as I am. But it's hard to find someone that's even like 80% good mm. to be worth it because, and then I'll find that if I'm by myself, I get bored. So I'm in a predicament. I'm in that thing of, I've had a couple of uh, workers over the years and then go back to solo and then had another one going back to solo. But I think I need to keep it solo and just keep myself busy, maybe float around that, maybe pop her up to 80 clients just really focus on getting good quality regular clients, I think, and just float there for a while. And, and you're happy with the level of work you're receiving at the moment or where you're at the moment? Yeah, yeah. Good. I'm a bit quiet, but it is winter and I have had a few like drop off different reasons, you know, and everything's gone to monthly now. Yep. So it's, it is quiet, but a couple of months time, I'm ready for like, I've had, a, like I said, I had a few drop off. Now 
I'll start to just put some fresh ones in, try and gain some really good clients coming springtime. And give the body a bit of a rest as well. I'm sure you, yeah. your body would get a bit knackered um, you know, before the springtime. So it's at least to give yourself a rest, a bit of time to set up, which is- I'm actually good. finding it's, I don't like it because I love the sunshine. So okay. now I'm actually getting lazier because my body is like, <laughs> it wants to keep moving. <laughs> yeah, sure. what it, I want the vitamin D. Well, that's the thing. Like if people take on the mowing franchise, you just, obviously you were, from a dairy farming background, like it's a, it's a, like it's a little far, like it's, what would you compare in terms of how, what was harder for you in terms of physicality with it being a dairy farmer was it doing the mowing franchise? Yeah, dairy farming. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, maybe yeah, there's differences, but it's, it's draining in every way yeah. possible. <laughs> yeah. I don't think people yeah. realize how hard of a job it is. Yeah. I think you just rock up and put the, put the cups on and walk away and do it twice those a day cups, and that's it. Those cups are actually quite heavy. heavy. They're yeah. actually, I think they end up being like five or six uh, kilos, the whole set. And if you're doing one, two, three, four, like you're doing one's one kilo each, maybe mm-hmm. you're doing four of those. And if you've got a dairy farm of 800 cows and you're doing that twice a day, like do the mass. That's a, that's a lot of, a lot of weights you're lifting. I no, I like my cousin's got a couple of farms down there. So I'm pretty familiar with, with dairy farmers. I've got a lot of respect for um dairy farmers and farmers in general. So yeah, doing that's a really good training for what you're doing now. And that's, um, Great to hear how you're finding it easier than what dairy farming is because I've, you're the first person I've interviewed who said that everyone comes from corporate jobs or sitting in an office and they come and do the mowing and they're, they're wrecked for the first month. Whereas with you, it's probably almost probably a relief going from the dairy farming to um to being a mowing franchisee. Yeah, it is a bit. Um, the worst the worst part of it's the the rain days and the yeah. like the the coldness because you you're not motivated. I find that the the sun just really motivates me, but um. Well, how do you mind about yourself on those days when it's not sunny? That's a good question. That's probably something good. How, how do you how do you manage yourself up for that? Podcasts, um, just good quality, funny. You know, sometimes you know, business podcasts. Uh, what do you listen to? Maybe what are a couple of recommendations? Yeah, Luke Smith. He's a really good one. Uh, it's called the Australian Lord and, and Garden Podcast, I think. Okay. Yes. Yes. And then. Um, uh, the Skull Sessions, BJ and uh, Ben from Catch Pro. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. They're real. They're they're a laugh. They're a bunch of they're a bunch of idiots, but they tell you a lot of good things too. They they kind of tell you the street smarts of owning a knowing business. Whereas Luke is more the really serious side. Yeah, and he'll talk. He'll knuckle down and talk about the numbers. And he did an episode the other the other month. One of his episodes about numbers, and it. It is the best episode I've ever heard talking about the numbers in a gardening business. Um, he explained it like so well, very, very in depth, but kind of very simple for people that like, I'm not the best with numbers and maths and taxes and all that. Not all, not a lot of people are. No, no. He attached a spreadsheet that you could download and figure out what you would need to charge as an hourly rate for your business. It was really helpful. And that's something you've taken and applied. You apply that sort of learning in your own business. Yeah, yep. because I, I I was thinking I was probably a bit low with my price, and after listening to that episode, he really made me think about it. And I punched in my details and what I owe, and you know all my all my costs. And it turned out I could have been putting things up at another twenty bucks an hour. A big difference. Yeah, and I've been factoring that into like new quotes and. Uh, and I did a price rise in, in July of just, you know, just gone. I haven't lost a customer yet. Everyone's said, yep, no worries. And any new quotes, I'm pretty much going 15 to 20 bucks above what I used to have, you know, quoted. Yeah. I'm glad you said that, Nathan, because this is a big, it's not a big problem, but it's, it can be a problem for franchisees who they feel weird or they don't, they don't want to um, raise rates because they might, they feel scared that the person might drop off and mm-hmm. you've almost got it as you like yeah, I can imagine. But you, you've done it, and then you saw that no one did drop off because they're happy with your service, and that must have been a good reinforcement um, to give you the confidence with to progressively do that over the years. Yeah, the last like last year when I put them up, I did have a couple of random ones drop off, but I could tell from the from before I even did it that I was like, I reckon these ones will drop off because they've always talked about, oh, I don't know if I can afford it, hmm. oh, I might skip this week, I can't afford it this week, that kind of thing. So I kind of knew they would anyway. So, and that's a good good bit of advice because it's something that a lot of franchisees sometimes do struggle with because they have that attachment to their customers or they might feel bad from doing it. 
Um, but I think that's the key, not getting, not getting overly personal. Like you can be personal and be, have a good relationship, but also be realistic about it. And I think that's just me as a person. I'm a realistic thinker. And at the end of the day, they, I'm doing a service and getting, I need money off them. And it, it is what it is. Like I, I, I need to get money off them and it has to be a certain amount for my business to, to, you know. To be viable, so. that's right. End of the day, you're a business owner. You know, you're not a you're not a charity, or you, as you said, you can be you can be friendly with people and stuff, but you, you've got to have that business mindset. Or if you don't, you're just gonna go out of business pretty quickly, unfortunately. And we know a lot of independents do that because they don't charge enough, because they're always having to compete on price and stuff, and then they disappear. Because there's a lot of independents in Warrnambool, I'm quite aware um, that you'd probably seen around. There's a lot of blokes going around for you with the um, the mar on the back. I would presume you would see as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's a great example. There's a a guy recently, and I'm, I won't name names, and and nothing against him, but he's given me a few clients because he's finishing up in the industry. I think he's been doing quite well. I think maybe he's been in for you know four or five years. But these some of these clients that he's passed over, he did like an email, described everything, you know, who they are, how much, and I'm going to check them all out. And some of the ones that he's given me that I would charge like including GST, 66. He's got off for $35. Jeez. Like just little unit, a little unit, like a little yard. But I'd be going for maybe 55, 66. He's got off for 35. Mm. And I'm thinking maybe that's part of the reason you might have been struggling. But yeah. there's people out there charging that low. Yeah, so, it's not sustainable. And um, no. yeah, that's why part of the gym's mowing franchise, we do have a lot of independents who do come across and, just because of that rates that the brand does is you, you, you got credibility with the brand in terms of what you can charge. Whereas, you know, a lot guy no one knows rocks up and charges 80 bucks an hour or whatever he's working off doing it. Um, it's definitely a bit harder to justify that. Do you find that when you quote, uh, Nathan, you don't have too much problem winning jobs, um, when you rock up in, as a Jim's buying franchisee? No, there's been a couple here and there. I've even had a couple that I may have just got through like Facebook marketplace or recommendation or someone gave me my, gave them my number nice. and I'll turn up and they'll be like, Oh, your gyms, like almost like a bad, Oh, your gyms. And I'm no, like, right. okay, is that what's, what's wrong with that? Like, and they just said, Oh, I've just heard you guys are super expensive and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, you know, we are, but the reason is because this, 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 you know, we've had the training. We, I mean, I myself have, all together working for that other guy I worked for seven years experience. So that's what we're, you're paying for the $10 million public liability insurance, um, at least checked. And we're made to hold accountable for like to a certain standard with gyms. Like, yeah. I, you know, I say to them, look, I'm not going to say all of us are fantastic. There's always a couple of bad eggs in everything, but I myself have, I listened when I went to gyms and I, you know, I understood the value of customer service when I went to the training and that's how I run my business. You know what, Nathan, it's a lot of bad thing for people to think that we're not going to be the cheapest because if they thought we we're going to be the cheapest, you know, how would you guys make a decent, you know, money? So mm. I think that's a really great point you make about that. And then the customer who might go for the cheaper ops and comes back to you six months because the blokes disappeared or they're just mm. not returning calls or they, they just stop rocking up, which is what we hear a bit of with, um, yeah. with people. Um, do you find that you've, have you won a few jobs from people, from other from people who have just stopped rocking up or stopped being in the mm -hmm. business? And... I have had a couple where, yeah, I've ended up, for, I don't know how I've got them or whether they've rung gyms or, or through Facebook. And then they've said, yeah, I did try another guy, but he just never turned up for the quote. Yeah. I'm just thinking, well, why wouldn't he? Like, so if someone does, so if someone does raise price to you as an issue, so you did mention it about then, is that something you do real off with the customer or how do you address that in that situation when you rock up to a thing and the first thing they say to you is like, oh, your gyms, you're going to be too expensive or something. Then how do you sort of talk to that customer or how do you approach that? I kind of say, um, yeah, I can understand where you're coming from, but, and then I start to explain why, like when you, and I use this one too, that. When you go to a mechanic, these days they've got, I don't know, 100 and whatever an hour, 150 an hour. No one questions that. You just pay it because they know what they're doing. They know how to fix a car and you need it done. Mm -hmm. So I use it. I use that example that you've asked someone to come cut your lawn and do it and you want a really nice job. 
we can do a really nice job because we're trained and I've got seven years experience. I've got the equipment to make it faster mm. and I've got all this stuff that I've paid for. So that's what's factored in our prices. So that's, and that's going to get you a good quality job and a friendly, uh, you know, customer service. And with someone that's cheaper, you might not get all that. Yeah. I and think they, easily. Uh, yeah. So you go. I was just going to say a lot of them usually come around. Um, some of them, they're still a bit meh. And I'm just think I think to myself, well, yeah, I don't want to one like that uh, anyway. So. But it's almost a thing like you're better off feeling like I reckon if you come across I don't know how many of your clients are business owners or small business owners, but if you deal with the business owner, you sort of you're probably gonna not come across it as much, whereas you might come across it as locked with people of employees and stuff. You know, they probably don't know the realities of running a business and or they mm-hmm. think they want to pay as cheap as possible all the time. Whereas you deal with business owner clients or people who own small businesses or clients, they're gonna be far more um, understanding. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. A lot of those ones, they're fantastic. Like they just get it straight away. Um, yeah, they're the, they're the gems they are. And equipment that you use, Nathan, what do you want to share with what brands and, and what, what stuff do you use and why? I've got a Hustler fast track 48 inch, like a commercial model. It's actually just 2022. It was like a really new one. Um, and I was lucky to get the commercial grade one. Um, before that, yeah, had another 48 inch. So yeah, just pretty much after three or four years, got a new one. And then I use, uh, the Honda, like everyone does the, I've had steel whipper snippers in the past after a while. Yeah. One of them broke, another one broke. And then I thought I'll change it up a bit. Got just a cheapo one from the mechanic sort of guy I use. And he sells a few things in Warnable. Don't even know the brand, but it was a fairly okay, cheap one that still had a bit of grunt. It was one of those ones, only about 380 bucks or something. So now I've got that as my spare though. And I've got a Ego Whipper Snipper, the commercial one. Yeah, nice. And that, 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 that thing's fantastic. Very, very light. It's still got some weight, but it's balanced well. It's very well balanced. So, and because I've got the, I've got the backpack with the bat, like I put the battery on my back and because the battery is not on the actual shaft yeah, it yeah. makes it no much lighter and i don't mind just chucking a backpack on every time i you know get out the car it's easy and yeah that's the job it's got some it's got power and it's instant power like that's the difference with the with compared to the petrol ones they will they'll slug off even on a cold morning like they will sometimes take a bit to get going whereas the ego ones just straight up full power Man, plus the noise as well, you know, depending on how you hold yours, you know, if you're holding a box, some, not supposed to, I don't think, but you know, if you hold it up by your head, like some people do, um, you're not going to go death in the ear with it. And the petrol fumes too. I'm finding yeah. like I'm wanting to get away from petrol be- just simply because of that. I When you're holding a hedge trimmer, like on doing a hedge and you often got it near your face, I haven't done a hedge for a while. And then the other week I did one and I forgot how much like the pe- the fumes just get in your yeah. face and- it was annoying. I, like I ended up with a bit of a headache and eyes were, you know, irritated. So, yeah. And the next thing I think. Yeah, there's, yeah. Ego, there's a good ego hedge trimmer and it has like the swivel joint. So, yeah. rather than having to go like that, you can, we did a video of a bloke with Chris, uh, Chris Sullivan about it. And yeah, he loves the swivel joint because he doesn't have to do the whole moving like that. He can just swivel it and it, away it goes. But um, yeah, that might be something for you to look at. They're really, you know, it's actually pretty good quality. I've seen them in action. They're um, really, really good. I think that's my next purchase. I had a bit of a go of one at the gym's trade day. This year and yeah, I've had a feel for how, yeah, how much power they got. Yeah. Nice. Now let's talk about the support. So how does support from, um, if you're a franchise or Matt, cause you'd be Southwest Victoria's Matt, Matt, what's your franchise or? Yeah, Matt. Yep. Yeah. So how's the support been from Matt? Yeah. Fantastic. He's kind of in a bit of a similar situation to me with an ex-wife and a couple of kids. Yeah. So we, we bond over that, I think. Um, and kind of, yeah, sometimes just share a bit of stuff and help each other out in a personal sense and just talk whenever we need and. He's all yeah, he'll call easy probably twice a month, I reckon. Sometimes I don't get the chat to him, but yeah. Usually he's there within a day or two if I miss his if he missed my call and yeah. Yeah, and he come does he come and do face to face meetings with you guys or something and come to the pub or anything like that or? He's mostly on Zoom. On Zoom. We have had a couple of couple of outings here, like um I think maybe three all up, two yeah. or three. So he start I think he started during COVID, which made it a bit tricky. Or just before COVID. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. That was, yeah, it, two years of never even met the guy in person, just over yep. the over the Zoom. That's good yeah. to hear. You have his support. I know Matt is a good fellow, and um, yeah, he he drives all over the state because he's got a really big region map. The Southwest, it, it goes right up to different places. So I know he's one for driving around. He's always in the car, and 
he's always on the phone and really good with support on Zoom. So it's good to hear that you guys get along. So what sort of stuff do you do you ask for? Do you need from your franchise or what sort of help do you ask for? In the past, it's been employee advice, like yep. how to go about things, whether it's pay rate or, or you know, rules and it will pull me in the right direction if he doesn't know. Um, sometimes I'll send him advertising ideas and he'll say, you know, yep, no worries. I'll look into that. Honestly, sometimes I've been, I've gotten behind in my face, um, and I'll, I'll bring him and just explained, oh, you know, there's been a few issues, you know, like I said, things haven't always been, and they still aren't. And I don't see if they will get any better, but with my ex-wife and things that haven't been smooth. So if I've had a bad week and I'll, and something's gone wrong and it's affected my finances. Yeah. And I haven't been able to pay. He's understood. And he said, yep, just keep me informed and just try and get the oldest one paid in the next month or something. And I'll, you know, I can be as far as a couple behind. So no, look, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm glad you, thanks for sharing that. You didn't have to, but really thanks for sharing that because um, a lot of blokes can probably empathize with you and probably have gone through similar situations. And there's probably a lot of fellas might be listening to this or watching this sort of can relate. So. You know, and it's great to have someone talk as genuine and authentic as you with that sort of stuff because, um, you know, when we do these things, sometimes they might seem like it's all roses. But as you said, like life, there is life as well and running a business and, and it's um, not no, no, it's not easy, no. no. But, but as you said before, doing it with Jim is it would be a lot easier for you than doing it as you, let's say, if you had a crack at it as an ind- independent. I would have never been able to do it by myself, put it that way. Yeah. If I, yeah, if, if I tried to, I would have failed. All the access, you know, access to be able to put my business under a loan, to be able to, like with um, easy rentals, to get my mower through Glen. Yep. Um, I wouldn't have been able to do it. So, yeah. As you've done well because it's, I've interviewed another guy called Dave Bacon. He was in a similar position, like it was his sink or swim, like he put everything into it and that just had to work and they made it work. So, looking back now on the journey, was there any sort of advice would you tell yourself from the start again or? Are you sort of just, you know, you really happy with your progress to where you are or what would you sort of, well, looking back on the four years, how would you sort of describe it or maybe give yourself some advice back in the early days? Yeah, I, I think maybe it's a bit of a bit of a personal one. I'd probably say to myself, because I'll, I'll admit I've had problems with mental health and, and anxiety and stuff, and I'd probably say to myself, don't be so scared to get that fixed and talk to somebody because once I got that fixed and I was in a better place in my head, I had the confidence to just power through and get new clients and just be positive. Yep. So I suppose I plotted along for too long, stressing and stressing and stressing, just doing enough to get by and then almost quitting multiple times thinking I can't do this, but then got help and just started to get a bit more positive. And I suppose to meeting my current wife um, has been fantastic because I've found someone that I'm extremely happy with and um, she has just given me the support um, that I desperately needed. Um, Yeah. And I suppose, yeah, tell myself to get organized with that earlier to then give myself more confidence and boost. Well, thanks for sharing that in regards to, so getting the help. So when you say getting your help, you mean, is that going to the GP to get the referrals to talk to a a psychologist or what does that mean? What does that mean for you? Yeah, I did like, you know, like 10 sessions, I think you get 10 free with the government or something. Um, and just went through some things. Like I was aware that I was struggling, but I just thought I could just power through and whatever. But the psychologist gave me so many good points and ways to think about things. And I think that was the biggest thing I learned from it is perspective, the ways to look at things. You can either look at it this way or that way. And that's how I just continue to live my life in the, you've got a choice. Or, yeah, this choice or that choice. Let it affect you or don't let it affect you. And that's how I've just been, yeah, I use every challenge. I'll just use that sort of method. And when you went through that whole process, once you went in there, I presume, once after you did that first couple of sessions, you'd be thinking, geez, it was far easier than maybe what I made out to be. Because I think a lot of blokes, it's not that they don't want to do it, but that's, it's more of the step going to maybe a doctor to tell them that to get the referral can be very, um, you know, stigmatizing or can be very embarrassing for some people that's generally the hardest bit right so from yeah. it's really good credit to you for um for doing that and um yeah thanks for letting us know that and and yeah so as, as you as you you're saying you would probably go back and deal with that sort of stuff earlier um if you knew what it was going to result to in terms of making life better yeah yeah, yeah. and it just because it made me a better person and then that it, 
that then helped my business, you know, flourish. And you, did you go to the full 10 sessions? I know I'll keep asking this, but I've got a bit of a passion in this area. So did you go to the full 10 sessions or what was it? How did it, how's that developed for you over the journey? Yeah, no, I did. Um, and then I learned so much from it. I just kept being like aware of it and like, I'll, you know, just search things up, go on Google, keep myself sort of knowledgeable in that kind of, in that area and just, yeah, keep training myself to think about things a different way and just get a bit pos- more positive as you know, months go on. And yeah, that's sort of what I'll continue doing. And I've, I've still had hard moments. Like I'm still, I have my moments where the anxiety just flares up. I mean, winter time when, when everything's slowed down, I probably at the moment, I'm, you know, I've, every winter, I think I go through the same cycle. I'll, I get worried and yeah. you worry about finances and you just freak out and then springtime comes and it's just nuts and you just, you're back into it. No, no. Thanks for sharing that. Um, Nathan, really appreciate it. And it's probably the best investment you can make in yourself. I know people think the cost, you know, obviously there's Medicare and stuff, but it still can cost a bit with the, um, the bulk billing sessions and stuff, but it's such a good investment that people can make in themselves and they tend not to blokes. It's a bit of a shame, but as you said, you know, it's such a, it's helped you. It's, it's really good to see and really great to hear that as well. Yeah. And socializing too. Yeah. I've always been a socializer and if I, if I don't do anything, you know, on the weekends and stuff, that really gets me down. I'll be honest. Like I'm, I just want to be going out, catching up with people, doing something. So, so what do you do on the weekend? Only Nathan, sorry. Did you go to the Shan or anything or what do you do? Uh, I'm above 30 now, so no, I don't go there too often. <laughs> you know, I felt old going there sometimes at Christmas going on, it changes all the time too. It's not like the good old days of the boost and stuff in there, but yeah. We've had a couple of random Christmas parties or whatever where me and the, me and my wife went there and yeah, I can't drink like I used to. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. No, I do like social yeah. yeah, so just catch up with some mates in the weekend around their house for a few beers or something or? Yeah, or fishing or fishing, just, yeah. even just going doing something with the kids. Like just being at home sometimes can be a bit, I don't know, just a bit antsy, you know? Just got to get outside and you know, get out and do something around the town. Well, some, yeah, well, that's, that's pretty reliable. Like some people are like that a lot. They have to just always be doing something. So if they don't, then they sort of get in their own thoughts and, mm. and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, no, I can completely relate to that as well. And, and so someone who's going to come to visit Warrnambool for the first time, what would you recommend they do? Is there a couple of things that you like doing around some local knowledge you want to share? Well, one, I think a lot of people don't realize how beautiful and how big Warrnambool is. Mm. I think they think it's a much smaller place, but there's everything here. It's like a little, it's like a smaller Geelong. The beaches and the scenery is insane. Like if you come in the summer, swimming, if you love your swimming, like you can get the swimming's fantastic, the beach. And there's the deep blue hot springs. Like mm-hmm. I went for the first time the other week and it was actually really nice. I mean, the shopping's good. I think, yeah, people are surprised by that. I think just the, there's a lot of stuff to go adventure, like going out to little towns outside of Warrnambool, you know, like the old way tree climb to you know, the rainforest. Yeah the waterfalls um there's just a lot of random stuff around that people probably don't realize yeah your hopkins fall your you know your kalani beach which is a bit of a no one goes there but it's a great little spot and you got obviously yeah. port ferry and stuff which all a lot of, lot yeah. of melbourne murder was all about you know it's it's got a lot of good stuff around it and obviously the yeah. kfc on a saturday night's a bit of a tourist attraction as well so well, they probably want to go to one of the nicer restaurants <laughs> i reckon there's a few of those so. there's, a few, there's a few up in Larbig street you know something like that up there but well, dude, Nathan, thanks for joining me very much on a Friday night. And um, really, thank you for sharing your honest story. I think it's great to hear um, the whole thing in regards to, um, you know, some challenges with, with life as well and, and regarding some mental health stuff. That's really great to get across to people because, you know, it's as you, it's not all it's not all roses all the time in business and in life. So it's really great to have your perspective on this. And uh, we thank you for, you for sharing in your time. And we'll get that a call of action to you if I point it the right way. Um, yes, after this as well, it takes five days to get to you. It's around, worth around five hundred, six hundred dollars. So, I mean, you, you, you and the missus can go for a, for a couple of nights out somewhere with that on, on us. So, thank you very much for your time tonight. No, thank you. I appreciate it. No, worries. thanks, Nathan. See you, right. mate. Thank you for listening to the episode of the More Than Just Mowing podcast by James Mowing. If you do need help with your local gardening expert, please give us a call at one three one five four six for Australia, 0800-454-654 for New Zealand, or head to jimsmowing.com.au or jimsmowing.co.nz. If you liked what you heard. Please make sure you leave us a review as well, wherever you consume your podcast. We appreciate your support. And until next episode, we hope you have a great week.